My car recently turned two years old in almost 27,000 miles. I'm doing some videos about maintenance at the two year mark. Previously, I talked about replacing the cabin filter. Today, I will be covering the 12 volt battery, including how to get to it if it's dead. If your 12 volt battery is dead and you need to access the frunk, you need to use this method. Press the toe eye cover in the upper right hand side. It will push in. Then carefully pull on the bottom left of the cover and it can be removed. Mine has never been taken off before so it needed a little help with a plastic pry bar. Carefully pull out the two wires that are inside the opening. Attached to the cover is the vehicle's red positive terminal. The other is the vehicle's black negative terminal. You can use a portable jump starter or a 9 volt battery to release the hood latch. Place the 9 volt battery so that the smaller positive terminal touches the positive lead and the larger negative terminal touches the negative lead. It should unlock the hood, but wait, it didn't work. A recent system software update this year has made a big change. If the car is locked, this method will not open the hood. Now let's try it again with the car unlocked. Press the positive connections together and then the negative connections. And there we go. The hood opens up now, and we have access to the frunk. If the battery is truly dead, it should be able to open the hood. However, I have heard in at least one case online where it didn't work. Carefully push the cables back into the opening, and then place the cover so that the tab is facing the upper right hand side. Then you can push it in to secure the cover. By the way, if you did need to have the car towed, you can attach a tow hook into this opening. First we remove the maintenance panel. Then we also have to take out the cabin intake trim panel. The 12 volt lead acid battery looks like a normal deep cycle battery found in other vehicles. The Model 3 uses a 45 amp hour AGM battery. One supplier is the Atlas BX with the Model 85B24LS. AGM batteries provide more power for size and weight than traditional lead acid batteries. Deep cycle versions like those used in Tesla vehicles are designed to be repetitively charged and discharged. If you were to use a typical lead acid battery in this application, it may only last a few months. So AGM batteries are also sealed, which eliminates acid spilling accidents and that need to periodically add water. So we're at the two year mark. Let's see how the battery is doing. Check to make sure that the connections are not corroded or loose. If there is built up, remove the terminals and use sandpaper while using goggles and gloves to remove any corrosion. Everything looks good on my car's battery. The terminals are tight and there's no rust. Use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen up the terminal connections. The positive terminal was on really tight. I had to push with a great amount of force to loosen it up. Let's do a test for parasitical draws. 
The best way to detect the problem is with a common multimeter and set up to measure amps draining from the battery. We first need to disconnect the positive cable from the battery. Turn the multimeter on and switch to measure DC amps. Then connect the multimeter in series between the positive battery post and the positive cable terminal. Now you should be able to see if there is a parasitic draw. It's going to be revealed on the meter's display. A tiny draw is normal. Anything above a few milliamps means you may have a problem that needs to be hunted down. The results of the test were actually zero amps showing. I also switched to the 12 volt meter and did the same test and I'm getting less than a volt. I will now disconnect the battery from the car to do a quick test of the voltage. Unscrew the negative terminal lead. And now take off the lead. Test with the multimeter set to DC voltage or 12 volt battery settings. Touch the red to red and black to black. You can see here that the voltage is 13.79. Anything over 12 is good for this battery. If you get lower readings or see the battery warning on the car's display, have it checked out by Tesla. This is an example of what the 12 volt battery warning would look like in the car. If you do see this warning, I would recommend getting the battery replaced by Tesla within a few days. Sometimes you may be able to get a week or two, but it's probably not worth the inconvenience. From what I have seen online, some people have had to replace their batteries at 45 to 50,000 miles. So you should get around two to four years of life out of the 12 volt battery. One tip for improving longevity is to turn off mobile access. When working on the 12 volt battery, make sure you don't touch the terminals or accidentally leave any metal objects that can cause a short. There are 12 volt lithium ion drop-in replacement batteries for ICE cars. These are quite a bit more expensive but do weigh less, so you'd think it would be great for an EV. But it turns out that Tesla's application of frequent deep charge and discharge cycles would greatly shorten the life of the lithium ion batteries that are designed for ICE cars. Perhaps only lasting six months to a year. Since there's no climate control on the 12 volt battery, its life is also shortened if you encounter climate extremes. However, there is one company that sells a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery that works for Tesla. These batteries use a different chemistry that works that gives a superior life over standard AGM batteries. This special chemistry is not as energy dense as conventional lithium ion cells, so they're not as effective for the main battery, but can work well in Tesla's 12 volt application. These batteries handle a wide temperature range, support deep discharges, and many more charging cycles than an AGM battery. The only downside is that the price is about double of what a standard AGM battery costs. See the link in the description if you're interested. When placing the cables back onto the terminals, make sure that they are tightened securely. The 12 volt battery is always charged via a DC to DC converter from the main battery pack. This takes the pack's high voltage and converts it to about 14 volts to charge the 12 volt battery. It's a bit more complex as the voltage to charge the AGM battery is tightly regulated and is compensated due to temperature. 
If the 12 volt battery is dead, you can jump it from another car or use a portable jump starter. I happen to own a jump and carry GNC 300XL. For example, if this battery was dead, I would take the red positive cable and attach it to the red positive terminal on the battery. And then this part is different than standard jumping procedures. Usually you would attach the black negative cable to the car's metal chassis. However, the official Tesla manual states that you should attach the black negative cable to the black negative terminal on the battery. Allow several minutes for the battery to charge up sufficiently. At this point, you can get the car to be moved out of a garage, for example, or onto a tow truck, or even driven to the Tesla service center for battery replacement. Over time, the ability to charge and discharge effectively slows down to sulfation. Lead sulfate accumulates on the negative and positive parts within the battery during discharge. Over many charge and discharge cycles, this process reduces the amount of energy that can be stored and extracted. At some point, the battery is considered bad, even though it may continue to work at some level. Fully discharging an AGM battery is bad, but not normally fatal. Fully discharging an AGM battery does reduce the battery's longevity. Normally this never occurs in a Tesla, but if a vehicle is not connected to a charger, the main battery is drained to 0% state of charge, the 12 volt battery may also stop being charged to protect the main battery. Within a few days, the 12 volt battery will be drained. Heat can be bad for an AGM battery, but the heat conditions encountered in the Tesla are usually fine. You don't have to worry about a high temperature ice in the same vicinity. That about wraps up my video on the 12 volt battery. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. It helps the channel grow. See you in the next video.